EV Ultra cable. It's the new thing. When you need to run a data cable and a power cable at the same time, why not combine them into one cable? Absolutely genius. Now we use EV Ultra cable a lot for our electric vehicle charging installations and it looks something like this. These two similar cables seem to be significantly different. Well, today's video is me comparing real EV Ultra cable with fake EV Ultra cable. Well, not exactly fake, but a different brand. And I think you'll be surprised to see the differences between these two. So we're gonna run them together side by side, the real Doncaster Cables EV Ultra cable, this one, versus another competitor brand, shall we say. Um, bought this from CEF. First of all, looking at the outside, Doncaster Cables has obviously got its branding, not to be biased, but um, there seems to be some interesting writing on this one. Oh, Artisan Electrics, Five Star Electricians 2022. So this is actually the cable that we made while we were visiting the Doncaster Cables factory. We got the privilege of writing our own branding on their EV Ultra cable, but it's the exact cable that they usually make from their factory, proper EV Ultra cable, and it's the tough sheath version. So it's a um, NYYJ or tough sheath with um, three core, six millimeter inside and a Cat5 data cable. The other version here is exactly the same, three core, six millimeter, but they claim that it's got a Cat6 data cable inside. And if we look at the writing on this one, it says three times six millimeter squared. And then it says plus Cat6A LSZH Pro Install EV Cable 2021. So what I'm going to do is just strip both of these down and just compare them side by side, see what they look like and give you my personal opinion on whether I think this alternative version uh, is any good versus the original Doncaster cables. So first of all, we'll do a cut test. Uh, now the Doncaster one has been on a drum in my van, so it's a little bit colder than this one, but it shouldn't make too much difference. We'll just cut off an inch. And to be honest, it's pretty, pretty chunky, so it's pretty tough to cut. This one is actually a lot easier to cut. Um, but I think the reason for that is that if you look inside, you'll see that this one doesn't actually have any kind of packing inside, any bedding as such. It's just got the outer sheath, but there isn't really any kind of inner sheath or bedding. Whereas the Doncaster Cables has this lovely white bedding inside, which really protects the cables, uh, the wires inside very well. So that's the first significant difference I would say is that there is, uh, there's more bedding, more stuff inside this one than inside the alternative version. Now let's strip these uh, down. And to do so, I will use one of these nice cable strippers. Uh, so I'm just going to strip strip a 10 centimeters or so off the off the end. Great little tools these, by the way, if you ever need to strip this type of cable. Okay, so that has stripped through nicely, and as you can see with the depth of the stripping tool. We've not even damaged or gone into the inner sheath at all there, which is nice. Now it's got this nice sort of powder inside as well, which um, makes it very smooth. Now let's try the same with this one. Right, okay, so that just pops straight off and just slides off. And then underneath, this is all you've got in terms of bedding, really. It's just this kind of, 
I don't know what you would call it, um, paper really. It's just a kind of papery substance. Uh, whereas this one, obviously, we've got a lot more. Now, because of the outer sheath uh, having been, you know, I've gone through the outer sheath, but there's no inner sheath, I have slightly nicked the Cat6 cable on that. With this one, what we need to do is just go around it again lightly and then we can peel off the inner sheath as well. Like so. So this is quite a thick inner sheath made of this, this bedding material. Um, which Doncaster cables have a particular recipe for and they change the recipe depending on the cable uh, to make it the right the right kind of suppleness and then inside you've got this plastic layering as well which wraps around then inside that you've got your data cable which is a cat5 you've got your power cables live neutral and CPC and then you've got this packing wire in the middle to just hold them all together nicely and keep it central and they all turn slightly so they're sort of naturally they naturally have a twist to kind of hold them together inside this one you've got your cat six supposedly and then you've got your three conductors there uh, live neutral and cpc all six mil the difference with these if you look at the inner cores is that these are what we call fine stranded, uh, whereas the Doncaster one is more solid, not completely solid, but you've got the seven, uh, seven copper cores there, whereas this has got, I don't know how many, very fine strands inside. So that would mean that this is more flexible and easy to work with, uh, whereas this is obviously a little bit thicker. It would mean that you need to put ferrules on these, whereas obviously on these ones you don't actually need to put ferrules. So that's just a, a little difference there as well. And inside this one there is no packing, uh, no packing wire inside, no bedding or anything. So that's uh, quite a difference there really. Now what I'm going to do with these is going to put them to the test by um, giving them a bit of a battering. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a hammer to them and just see how they do in the hammer test because I think that's quite important really. So just to protect my lovely table I will put them on the mat and then I'm just going to give them a bit of a beating. In fact I'll do it on the other end. Let's see. Okay. So now that I've given those a hammering, let's have a look. Okay, so we can see the Doncaster one is pretty much still round. The other one has flattened somewhat. Um, so if we strip the ends off these now and we can see if there's any actual damage inside. Bearing in mind these are supposed to be tough sheathed cables. Although they're not armoured, they should be able to take a bit of a battering because they're going to be outside. They need to be able to survive. Um, you know, a bit of impact, a bit of weather, all that kind of stuff. So they should be, you know, pretty tough, really. So the Doncaster one doesn't look like it's had any impact at all on it. Let's have a look at this one. So it, it has flattened these inner cores slightly, so it has definitely the damage has got through to the internals, which is not ideal, and this data cable is pretty, it's pretty flat there, as you can see. Um, that's not ideal. So interesting to see the difference that that inner bedding really makes in protecting the cable from impact. I think that's quite important, really. 
Now let's just strip off the inner cores of this. We'll do that on the other end, the non-damaged end. And we'll see what they look like inside. So we'll strip back the data cable first. So inside this data cable, we've actually got a uh, foil shield. Then you've got a plastic shield. And then you've got your four twisted pairs. And you've even got a little bit of string in there as well and a little metal uh, wire there which could be used to earth the sheath if needed. With this one, let's see what's inside this data cable. Okay, so again we've got foil, we've got a kind of a stringy thing. Um, and then actually in each set of pairs are actually foiled as well and we've got a metal earth wire. So this is F slash FTP foiled on the outside and then foiled twisted pair. Um, so that from a protection point of view is why it can be called a CAT 6A. Uh, I guess, because each individual pair being foiled and then being slightly thicker cores will mean that it can you can get a faster transfer rate, but it's really not needed in most EV installations anyway because you don't need high speed unless you're running internet over it, it's just for a CT clamp. Now interestingly with these, the yellow, the orange is orange, but the the white has no other identification on it, whereas with the Doncaster one, you've got orange, but then you've got a white, uh, white and orange stripe there, so you can clearly tell which pairs are which. Now I suppose because these ones are foiled together, you're going to know which one goes with which anyway but just a little observation there. And in terms of the thickness of the data wires, you can see there is a there is a difference. The um, Cat 6A in the alternative brand is slightly thicker than the Cat 5 in the Doncaster version. So that's the data cable. Just cut that off and clean it up. So what about the power? So in terms of the power, if we get rid of this, if we strip back the alternative brand, we can see what's inside here. Um, quite hard to strip. So that's the green yellow. In fact, it's yeah, it's got a very slight. Um, it's got a very slight green stripe on it, but it is technically green and yellow. And then this one. So you can see the difference between these, the Doncaster one there, you've got your seven strands of solid copper. Just flay those out so you can see them. So that's your seven stranded conductor. Still fairly flexible to work with. Um, the alternative brand does have this fine stranded copper. So you can see that it's um, fine stranded, which makes it more flexible in terms of the actual internal cores compared to this, which is a little bit stiffer. Uh, but I don't really understand why you would need that in an EV installation because, okay, you can put ferrules on it and stuff, but you know this, the more solid conductor is absolutely fine. We've never really had any issues with those. Um, it would be a bit more flexible, I suppose, to work with in a very tight EV charging point where it's very tight to get the wires. I suppose it's a little bit easier to work the wires into place. In terms of the actual quality of the look of the cable, um, notice this. There's a bit of green spotting on this yellow wire here. The actual line itself is not really very neat. The whole kind of quality feel of it is just, well, not very quality to be honest. Whereas the Doncaster ones are very uniform, everything feels solid and high quality. 
um, down to the little details like this little packing bit of bedding in the middle and just the fact that everything's nicely coloured. Um, this cable, if you bend it, let's see what happens. If you bend it, it goes flat there. See it kind of kinks? So that is because there's no bedding in it. It's almost like a hose pipe, you can just kind of kink it. And it doesn't sort of stay, in, like if I bend it like that, it just goes back to being straight. So imagine you're trying to clip it to the wall and you want a nice bend. You're gonna have to have a clip here and here in order to hold it into place. And even then the bend is gonna have like little ripples and it's gonna go flat. Uh, with the Doncaster one, let's see what happens when we bend this. So when you bend that, it kind of stays uh, and it you know holds in place quite nicely. And if you bend it really tight, it doesn't actually kink. Like it's got, because of the bedding, it's got a maximum bend radius that you can have, uh, but it, does, it won't just kink like a hose pipe. Like I can't really even get it to kink like a hose pipe because it's so solid because of that internal bedding. So I think that's a real big important factor in terms of the quality of the cable is the fact that it does have this bedding versus the other one that just doesn't and I wouldn't really feel that it's very reliable to install for a long a long period of time. I just feel like it's if you're installing EV infrastructure you want a cable that's going to last many many years and with Doncaster cables the quality of the product is clear to see really just from stripping it apart taking it down taking it to pieces you can see that it's a product that's built to last uh, and having been at their factory as well I can just say that the rigorous testing that they do on these cables and the quality control procedures that they have in place and everything um, I would trust and be able to rely on this absolutely uh, whereas that other one I'm just not really sure where it came from what they're intending to do with it it just just doesn't quite feel right to me it feels like somebody's just trying to make a cheap knockoff solution of this which is a very special and important product for us as we use it a lot somebody's just trying to make a cheaper version and um, it's just not the same and it's not as good so in my personal opinion Doncaster Cables is by far the best when it comes to EV cables in terms of a cable that has data and power built into it and I trust these and I'll rely on these I'm not going to be switching anytime soon to the alternative brand anyway I hope this video has been of benefit to you of interest to you if it has don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button it really helps the channel to grow when you hit that like button and uh, maybe leave us a comment down below of your thoughts about this too. What do you think? Do you use EV Ultra? Have you used the alternative? Or maybe there's another alternative out there that I don't know about yet and I would love to know all your thoughts about it in the comments section below. Um, as always, thanks so much for watching guys and have a great day.